Welcome to Starbase, Texas. This is a, a city, it's actually legally a city, that uh, thanks to the hard work of the SpaceX team, we built out of nothing, and is now a gigantic rocket manufacturing system. See it, we're actually on a public highway, so you can come and visit and drive down the road and see the epic hardware. I think this is the first time that a rocket development program has actually been on a public highway. We just did a tour of the factory, and um, it really helps illustrate how manufacturing and manufacturing at scale is critical to the strength of America. And I'll, I'll tell you a little bit just about the purpose of SpaceX. We want to make Star Trek real. We want to make Starfleet Academy real. So that it's not always science fiction, but one day the science fiction turns to science fact. We have spaceships going through space, big spaceships, with people going to other planets, going to the moon, and ultimately going beyond our star system to other star systems where we may meet aliens uh, or discover long dead alien civilizations. I don't know, but. We want to go, <laughs> and we want to see what's happening, and we want to have epic, futuristic spaceships with lots of people in them traveling to places we've never been to before. Uh, and that's what I think the public thinks of with, when they think of Space Force. Uh, on that note, I'd like to introduce the Secretary of War, Pete Hexeth. Well, what a tour. What an opportunity to be here at Starbase, Texas with Elon and the SpaceX team. There's nothing like this in America. There's nothing like this in the world. And what you have built and what you will build here is a testament to the strength of American ingenuity and American invention. And to outline today the future of technological innovation at the War Department. Those of you here at SpaceX will appreciate this, knowing that as World War II was ending, the Secretary of War and Secretary of the Navy wrote to the National Academy of Sciences and declared that scientific research was essential to our national security. To ensure continued preparedness, they wrote, the research scientists of the United States must be called upon to continue in peacetime some substantial portion, that of which they have made so effectively during the stress of the present war. The competitive time element in developing those weapons and tactics may be decisive in future conflict. You see, those secretaries of war and Navy many decades ago recognized the importance that innovation and readiness holds for our national security. They knew what was at stake, the very freedoms of the country we hold dear. President Trump's AI executive order spells out our approach succinctly. It is the policy of the United States to sustain and enhance America's global AI dominance in defense of human flourishing, economic competitiveness, and national security. Ladies and gentlemen, is the War Department's mission. We must ensure that America's military AI dominance so that no adversary can exploit that same technology to hold our national security interests or our citizens at risk. America first in every domain. Last month, I took the first step toward changing how the department does business with Frontier AI Technologies when we announced the rollout of Gen AI with our partners from Google. And I want to thank the Google team for leaning forward and making the investment to get their Gemini app to about 3 million users in the War Department. But today, we're excited to announce the next Frontier AI model company to join GenAI.mil, and that is Grok from XAI, which will go live later this month. To further that, today at my direction, we're executing an AI acceleration strategy that will extend our lead in military AI established during President Trump's first term. This strategy will unleash experimentation, eliminate bureaucratic barriers, focus on investments, and demonstrate the execution approach needed. In short, we will win this race by becoming an AI-first warfighting force across all domains. From the back offices of the Pentagon to the tactical edge on the front line. The catalyst for this acceleration will be seven pace-setting projects focused on mission threads across warfighting, intelligence, and enterprise missions, each with a single accountable leader, aggressive timelines, and measurable outcomes that answer a familiar question, Elon. What have you accomplished this week? This is the execution standard for AI-first transformation. We will not win the future by sprinkling 
AI onto old tactics like digital pixie dust. We will win by discovering entirely new ways of fighting. That's why we will run continuous experimentation campaigns, quarterly fo force on force combat labs with AI coordinated swarms agent-based cyber defense and distributed command and control. Pushing the envelope, learning from failure at every stop, which is exactly what this place does. Military AI is gonna be a race future where the risks to US national security of moving too slowly outweigh the impacts of imperfect alignment. To do this, Cam and his team at, TD, uh, at CDAO will define AI deployment velocity metrics for all the pace setting projects in the next 30 days. Second, bureaucratic blockers. If you work with Elon, he, you know he finds the blockers and you remove them. We will take a wartime approach to people and policies that block this progress. You want to block? You work somewhere else. Barriers to data sharing, authority to operate, or ATOs, test and evaluation, and contracting are now treated as operational risks, not simply bureaucratic inconveniences. We are blowing up these barriers. I'm establishing a barrier removal SWAT team under R&E, anything that slows down the acceleration of AI capabilities. Third, compute resource. We will invest heavily in expanding our access to AI compute. President Trump's executive order has directed us to build data centers on military land. We will work together with our partners at Google and AWS and Oracle and SpaceX, Microsoft and others on these initiatives. Fourth pillar is talent. We will use every hiring and pay authority available to us to bring the best American technical talent. We're going to heavily leverage President Trump's Tech Force initiative to bring in the best and brightest from industry and academia. Fifth responsible AI. Today I want to clarify what responsible AI means at the Department of War. Gone are the days of equitable AI and other DEI and social justice infusions that constrain and confuse our employment of this technology. Effective immediately, responsible AI at the War Department means objectively truthful AI capabilities employed securely. We will judge AI models on this standard alone. Factually accurate, mission relevant, without ideological constraints that limit lawful military applications. Department of War AI will not be woke. It will work for us. We're building war-ready weapons and systems, not chatbots for an Ivy League faculty lounge. Sixth and finally, data. And the US military has an asymmetric data advantage from two decades of military and intelligence operations that no other military in the world can replicate. But right now we are underutilizing this advantage. Too much of our data is stranded, is locked behind Title 10 or Title 50 stovepipes, invisible to operators, engineers, and industry who can help us exploit it with winning speed and scale. CDAO will exercise its full authority to make all appropriate data available across federated IT systems for AI exploitation. Beyond AI, we need to break down unnecessary barriers to rapid technological development. It's a generation ago, the Last Supper advocated for the consolidation of our defense industrial base. This consolidation created a closed innovation ecosystem dominated by just a handful of prime contractors. The results have been characterized by soaring costs, sluggish delivery, and stagnant innovation. Today, that old era comes to an end.